Formerly, you asked us to say a few words about the war dogs of the Roman Empire. Who were they and what were they considering the historical sources, that very rarely, but occasionally mentioned them, the so-called fighting dogs, who were referred to in ancient Latin language as Coanis Pugnaax. The question is particularly interesting in light of the fact that today, in connection with many dog breeds it is almost a recurring legend, such as the Neapolitan Mastiffs, the Can Corzos and, at times, the Rottweilers, that these breeds are descended from Coanis Pugnaaxes. This statement is made in almost every description, one way or another, but the info of what these dogs were like and what the Romans really used them for, and what the sources of the time say about them, well, this question almost never arises. What is quite certain is the fact that many ancient warrior nations used large and aggressive dogs in their combat operations, wars, and raids. There are references to this in relation to the ancient Egyptians, the Assyrians, the Persians, but also Alexander the Great. These dogs are commonly referred to by Roman sources as molossers. Why would the Romans be the exception? One of the reasons for the success of ancient Rome was undoubtedly that what they considered useful and effective was taken over from them in their history always and without hesitation from the people with whom they came into contact and fought a war. For simplicity's sake, let's start with what these dogs, Coanis Pugnoaxes, certainly were not used for. Today's humans tend to romantically imagine the combat use of these dogs, which somehow would look like hundreds of large, mostly black dogs storm an enemy army on the battlefield, tearing the enemy soldiers apart and winning the battle for their masters. Now, this is precisely the use that almost certainly did not happen, and therefore, about such a situation, no surviving information remained in any sources. And why? There is a very simple reason for all this, for dogs, no matter how wild and powerful they may have been, and no matter how many they were, they would have had a simple zero or null chance against a disciplined armed force with steel stabbing and cutting weapons. Even then, well-trained dogs were of enormous value, and their mass loss would have been a huge financial loss for their owners. How so it is was revealed in 120 BC, when the British Arvernii tribe deployed hundreds of British Molossuser en masse against a small Roman army group where they failed in a short time. In 55 BC, Julius Caesar himself commemorates in his letters on the campaign against Britain that the British Molossers used by the Celts. They were especially respected by the Romans for their courage, but of course the Celts did not succeed in this way either. If not this way, then how did the Romans use these fighting dogs? The only concrete chronicle of the successful use of these dogs in a direct military campaign survived from 231 BC, when Consul Marco Pomponio Matho led the Roman legions who arrived to capture Sardinia Island. In this case, there are written evidences of the mass deployment of Coanis Pugnoaxes, most of whom were used to hunt down the poorly equipped indigenous people who were already on the run and were fighting a guerrilla war. From this event, we can logically conclude that the successful use, or even the use of dogs on the battlefield at all, may have occurred in cases where the enemy consisted of irregular elements, who perhaps fought in smaller, poorly armed troops or gangs and who might shave already fled from the Roman legions. In addition, Roman sources often mention that the Coanis Pugnoaxes performed important tasks in protecting castrums or moving forts, built at night. To understand all this, we must consider the following. Roman legions, often marching in hostile areas, traveled an average of 20 miles per day, from 6 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. When they stopped marching, they built a night camp, every night, which were castrum or fortress, in which they survived the night camp within it. In hostile territories, a Roman army was the most vulnerable during the construction of the castrum, since legionaries, without heavy armor, replaced the gladius for shovels and an axes. During this period, sentries with dogs patrolled the area and indicated in time if an enemy attack was prepared and the four-legged guards played a major role in the night watch as well. In addition, the dogs of that time were used to transmit messages, and some descriptions were preserved that the enemy's camp and herd of animals were harassed by these animals, causing panic. In some rare cases, dogs were sent to the scene with burning oil tanks on their backs. These dogs, according to the sources, were called pyrifers or fire carriers. 
Aside from legends, if we look at on on credible sources, we know this much about the use of Koani's pugno axes on the battlefields, everything else is the result of extremely colorful human fantasia. In addition, these dogs had a much better documented, much more frequent use, which is nothing else, than fighting in gladiatorial arenas. In ancient Rome, the gladiator training center was Capua, which is located in present-day Campania, where professional fighters were trained in many schools, Ludices. Many of the former records of Koani's pugno axes are related to the breeding and training facilities in Capua, where dogs were prepared and trained, partly for military, but primarily for the purpose of performing in the arena. Although registered breeds did not exist in the world at the time, these institutions can be considered the dog breeding supercenters of the Roman Empire, as, from all lands and nations, who were occupied by the Roman, the largest, the most combative, and most viable molossers and large dogs were delivered here. In these lotuses, dogs were were tried, mixed with each other's, and prepared for fights against humans and animals in arenas. The few types of dogs mentioned in the chronicles are Iberian Paros, the Sardinia Dogos, and the Fanis Molossers. Although in our days, when it comes to Koani's pugno axes, there is usually an idealized Can Corzo or a Neapolitan Mastiff appear on the picture, the truth is that we know almost nothing about the appearance of these dogs, as at that time it did not have any importance, only the efficiency and workability that counted. Almost the only, very rare, but concrete reference to the phenotype of these dogs is the reference mentioned in a few chronicles that, as a watchdog, among the Roman patricians, the dogs with yellow or silver-colored eyes had the highest prestige.